Hi, I'm Carly Bell, and welcome to my craft room. Today I'm going to be showing you how to add an applique design to a kid's or toddler size shirt. Uh, I live in New Orleans and right now it is almost Mardi Gras time, well it's in the middle of Mardi Gras time pretty much. But anyway, I recently made my girls these really cute skirts and so now I want to make them a shirt to go along with it. So in my last video I showed you how to hoop a toddler size shirt and this is the same shirt I have it here all ready to go so if you have questions on how to hoop a shirt please check back on my previous video which I will link in the top corner here but anyway I have the shirt all ready to go so next I'm going to show you how I go online and I purchase embroidery designs and then use a software program called Embrilliance Essentials to upload that design I just bought, add a name to it, move it around, resize it a little bit. Um, it gives you a little bit of wiggle room to resize. You can't manipulate it a whole bunch, but I did shrink it down about 20%. Um, so next, let's go to the computer and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Today, I'm going to be purchasing a design from Embroidery Boutique for my daughter's Mardi Gras shirt. Uh, this is the design that I chose and normally it is around $4.50 for just the one design but there is a sale going on that if you buy eight or more you get them for a dollar each so I already have eight designs in my cart I got some more Mardi Gras designs and some other cute designs that I thought would be good for my girls so now I'm going to check out So I've purchased my designs and it says here to click to download your digital goods. And this is the one I want so I'm going to click download. And once it is finished, um, click on your downloads folder and it will pop up. And now you can open up your Embrilliance Essentials program. And you can just drag the file into the program. So since I have a brother machine, I'm going to use a PES file. And I am doing a design in 5x7 hoop today. So as you can see, it is wider than the hoop when I first start. Because the design is meant to be hooped horizontally. But since I've already hooped my shirt and I have it in a vertical position, I'm going to shrink it down slightly so that it fits. Uh, do not try to change the size of the design any more or less than 20% or you will compromise your stitches and it won't stitch out right. So now I'm going to center it and move it up. And next I want to add my daughter's name to it. I wanted to show you the font that I'll be using. It's from Jolston's Design and it's number 231 hand lettered floss stitch font. Um, the BX fonts work really nicely with Embrilliance. I have already purchased this font, so, but you would essentially do the same thing that you did with purchasing a design. You would download it, open your downloads folder, and then drag the BX font into Embrilliance. So, it, next you would click the A at the top of the screen and then open up your fonts and all of your BX fonts will show up here. And it, ours is JD231 and it came in sizes half inch to four inch. But today I'm going to be using one inch for Elise. So I will type out her name and click set. Now because this is a script font, you can see that there are spaces in between the letters. So you can adjust the spacing to move the letters closer together until the letters are connected. So then I will center this in the banner that is going to be applique. So something else I wanted to show you is that as I'm working on my machine, I have my computer up right next to it and looking at the order of the stitches. Because the screen on the PE 770 and 800 is really small, um, it's sometimes it's hard to tell 
which uh, color you should be using for the next step. So here you can break down this whole design and see that the first stitch is these yellow pieces, the second stitch is green, the third is purple, and so on. And so you could each you can see each step of the design as you're working on your machine next to it. Um, also, this is the placement stitch for these pieces of applique. This is the tack down. This is the actual zigzag stitch. And then same thing, placement for this banner, tack down, and zigzag stitch. And then finally her name is last on top of that. And I know it's showing blue on here because I'm working on a single needle machine where I am changing the thread color for each step. Um, it really doesn't matter what it is in the program itself. I'm going to end up using purple on it, but it's fine that it's showing blue on here. It's not something you need to change. So that is it. So I'll be using this as a guide as I'm using the machine. So now that I am done on the computer, next we'll be moving to the machine. So I've plugged in, this is my USB plug, really cute little sewing machine that has my designs on it. I plug that that's in, I turn on the machine. It says please touch the display. The carriage will move, okay. And so next I'm going to choose my design. So I'll pick the USB. And I have a few things on here, so I will scroll over until I find it. Here it is, releases Mardi Gras. And I will press upload. And now it's gonna show each step. So this is the part where I use my computer, which is right next to my embroidery machine to know which step I wanna do in which color. These are the three color Mardi Gras colors I'll be using today. So I have these threads set up here. I have my thread holder, which is linked down in the description below. I like this better than putting the thread here. I find it just works better. Uh, so the first color is yellow. So I'm gonna load that up. And just follow the number system outlined on the machine, outlined on the machine, and use your threader, Okay, now we can load the shirt onto it, so this, I have a lot of bulk going on here, can move it and then clamp it on. Make sure it's clamped on right. Make sure there is no material going on the underside of the hoop here. And then next you can also check that your needle is on your center mark that you made with your fabric marker when you were doing your placement. And so my fabric marker kind of uh, went away since it's been a couple days since I used it but it looks, I can still see the center dot and it looks good and ready to go. So now I will lower my needle and start stitching by pressing the green button. Okay, now that it's done with yellow, we can see with this design, there are going to be a lot of jump stitches and it's gonna get real messy real quick. So what I'm gonna do is use my little, um, I, I use this for applique, I use this for everything. These are like tweezer-like scissors, I don't know. You can see them, but I'll have them um, linked down below, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut these jump stitches while it is on the machine just to get them out of the way. Right, I 
again, I will snip the jump stitches. So now we're done with all of the sketch portion of the design and next will be the actual applique. So my personal preference when I'm doing applique and they have more than one tack down is I go ahead and stitch all of the placement stitches um, by just using the screen here to move around. So first I'm going to stitch the place down for these yellow circles that will be here. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut these jump stitches so they are not in the way. And next, I'm going to scroll over to well, you want, adjust and then the needle plus minus. And so then we're going to go ahead one whole section. So next is the tack down stitch. So we're going to skip that. That's the zigzag stitch. We're going to skip that. And now we're on the placement of the banner and we will start. And now we're going to take the shirt off and bring it over to the table to cut the applique fabric. So now we have our shirt with our placement stitches. So I've chosen this solid yellow for the circles and this gingham yellow for the inside of the banner. So the first thing I do is open up my fabric and lay it out over the area and then just cut a piece big enough. So because all of these are on the same step, we need a piece that is big enough to cover this whole area. So So these are our pieces, so the next thing I'm going to do is iron them. And one of the tricks to having a really good applique is to add heat and bond light to the underneath of the fabric. So. I have a roll of this and this is linked in the description box down below. Okay, so now we have our fabric and heat and bond. And now we just iron. And then you 
peel off the paper layer and that is ready to go. So now we can go back to the machine and place these on our shirt for the tack down stitches. So now I am back in the machine. I have my shirt loaded back on, but the last step I did was the banner. So now it's telling me to do the banner tack down, but I am going to back up to the dot tack down stitch and now take my yellow fabric Make sure it is covering all of my placement stitches. Lower my needle and press start. So now I am going to cut the excess material off from around each circle using my applique scissors. And so that now that is done, I'll place it back on the machine to do the second stitching. So next step is actually to finish the zigzag step on these circles, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So next it's doing the placement stitch, but we already have that, so we're going to jump ahead now to the tack down stitch. And we're going to put our fabric in place. And since this is going close to the edge, I'm going to make sure I'm holding my shirt back while it's doing it. Also, because this is a patterned fabric, we want to make sure it's not crooked. Even if it's in the placement stitch, we want to make sure that the pattern is straight across. Okay, I'm gonna stop right now because it looks like the thread got caught up. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut. And right here, it came out a little bit, so I think I'm gonna go back and restitch. I'm gonna cut that out. over that area again and it's easy to go back by just hitting so this changes the actual step but these two buttons here change the stitch so we can go back stitch by stitch so I'm gonna hold this down until I get all the way around back to the top of the L right there and I'm gonna start again So that's it, the stitch is finished and now we can pull it off and go clean everything up. So now I am going to undo everything. Well first, I see one more jump stitch here where the eye was that I will cut. Especially with sketch designs, 
you may have some remnants of the water soluble topper I always keep a little water spray bottle and we'll spray it to get it off now you can turn the design back and remove your tear away, but leaving your poly mesh stabilizer there. And you don't need to get the tear away all in there, I just usually get the outer part. And then for all of my embroidery designs, I put something called Tender Touch on top of this so these threads are not rubbing against your kid's skin. So I just cut a piece big enough. Sometimes this will come off on the edges when you wash it and you can always just iron it back down. are done with our design. You take a piece of parchment paper. You want to iron the front but protect the thread. And this also helps activate the heat and bond which we put underneath our applique fabric to lay nice and flat. So now we are all done. So we are all done now embroidering our applique design on our toddler size shirt. Uh, I think it came out pretty cute. I think my little girl's gonna like it to wear to the Mardi Gras parades this weekend with her cute skirt that I made for her. So if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button down below. If you have any other questions about machine embroidery, please check out my website, carlybell.com for a list of all the supplies that I use and for other projects that are going on here in my craft room. Thanks so much.